This video is generously sponsored by the insurance agent, Allison Alcott. To get a confidential consultation with Allison, visit adjusterTV.com slash health right now. What happens when you put your phone number in is you, it gets sold to 5 billion different agents and then they cold call you and you just get text and phone call and text and phone call over and over and over and over and over again until who knows how long. In this video, we're doing a deep dive on health insurance for independent adjusters, independent contractors, small business owners, and really anybody who doesn't get health insurance through work. We're going to talk about the differences between group plans that you might get from a big employer, private insurance for people who don't have a job that provides health insurance, the Affordable Care Act marketplace, and even health sharing outfits like MediShare. And at the end, find out how to get a fast quote from one agent without getting slammed by 10,000 telemarketers. Starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. Hey, Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. It's one of the biggest things that you can do to help adjust your TV. And now here's my interview with Allison. Hi, I'm Allison Alcott. I am an insurance agent. So what I do is I help people find insurance. So I started my career after college be as an insurance adjuster for a large uh, insurer, auto insurer. And I became an adjuster uh, and I did that for about 15 years. I was an adjuster and a manager and went through that. And my son actually uh, had leukemia at one point. And I decided that I, uh, you know, wanted to kind of go out on my own and not work for a large company anymore. And so what I ended up doing was I started uh, becoming an independent adjuster. So I did that for a few years and then I transitioned over into an agent. And so now I'm an insurance agent. It's been going really well. I love kind of uh, meeting new people and I love just uh, helping people find coverage. Maybe, I don't know if you can kind of talk about the, the sort of the landscape of health insurance for people who are like sure. self-insured or who are like independents like us or small business owners, kind of what does that look like? What, I mean, what are our choices? Definitely. So, you know, coming from a big insurer, I always had access to group coverage and I had no idea that <clears throat> a group, I had no idea what challenges that, you know, people that didn't have access to group coverage even had, because I was always lucky and didn't even realize that it was such a benefit to have group insurance. So basically the biggest challenge really is finding, you know, affordable health insurance and finding something that'll, you know, meet your needs. So pretty much the options really are um, just for anyone out there is group with your employer. Then you have, um, the marketplace. So a lot of people don't realize, but the marketplace is also Obamacare and it's also the Affordable Care Act. So it's all the same thing. Obamacare, AKA Affordable Care Act, AKA uh, the marketplace. So uh, th that's always one option. And then there's also short term plans and health share plans. So a lot of people use like Christian health ministries. A lot of people use, um, uh, short-term plans so lots of different insurance companies have short-term plans and then there's also private insurer pri private insurance through a um through a different through like a third-party private insurer so like united healthcare for example has a private insurance company where they can offer benefits as well so those are pretty much your options uh, it's very uh, if you don't have access to group you pretty much have very limited options um you know, when it comes to you and your family's health care. So kind of from a from sort of a practical standpoint, um, like what would be what what could you get on plan A that you would be impossible to get on plan sure. B, but that you could get on plan, and not to go into like super details about sure. it, but just kind of like just like an overview. Sure. So there's always the marketplace and the marketplace, the Affordable Care Act, it put into effect uh, there's lots of good things, lots of good benefits to it. And then there's also some benefits that aren't so um, attractive to everyone. So some of the benefits to um, 
to the marketplace is that it is guaranteed issue. So anyone can get on it. So that means that whether you have uh, diabetes, whether you have cancer, whatever, whatever your condition is, you can get on it. Um, that's also could potentially be a detractor because if you're perfectly healthy and there is, um, and you have nothing going on and you only see the doctor two times a year for your physical and a sick visit, then you're paying extremely high premiums for coverage that you're really not ever going to use. Um, so that's kind of the difference between uh, a marketplace plan and maybe like a private insurer plan who's geared more towards, uh, you know, healthy individuals. Uh, there's also a health share plan. And, you know, I have some clients that have come from health share plans and uh you know i think i think anything that you have is good i just think that with a health share plan the my only concern with those are it's not regulated so it's one of those things where the uh, insurance companies are regulated by the by each state and so they have guidelines that they have to meet and they have certain deadlines that they have to pay bills by and things like that the uh health share corporate or companies they have no uh, regulatory people that manage any of that. And so your bill could be sitting there for 30 days. It could be sitting there for seven months. And it's up to them whether they pay it. And then short-term plans, basically, those plans are good for like a bridge. So if you lose your, if you lose your job or you're moving to another job, you can buy a short-term plan for that little gap in coverage that you have. So that's kind of what the short-term plans are designed for. Okay, so then, so then for like the, the the coverages that you're talking about that you sell are more for folks who are probably don't use health insurance that often because they're they're healthier, right? So um, maybe talk a little bit about your what you guys offer. Yeah, so the plans that uh, we have that uh, I mean I hope everyone. So whether you're going onto the marketplace or whether you're going with a private option, either way. But yeah, I mean typically speaking, a private option, it's going to be uh, it's going to be geared toward the majority of healthy individuals that may not be able to either afford or the deductibles might be too high on the marketplace plan. The health share plans aren't. Um, are like actual insurance and it'll say that it's a health sharing plan so it'll say that it's not actual insurance and so if you want actual insurance but don't want to go to the marketplace a private insurer is really the only way you can get that and so you know the biggest appeal to um you know a private option is it doesn't cover everything but nothing really covers everything but um basically the biggest appeal is is that it gives you upfront benefits without having to uh, meet like this really high deductible. Uh, so that's pretty much the uh, biggest uh, plus of a private option is that it's more affordable for some and there's not large deductibles that you have to meet. Okay, so you're not paying for, you're not paying for things that you don't need. So if you were a single man, you wouldn't be paying for mammograms and things like that, right? Yes, well, mammograms are covered uh, depending on, you know, your, if you're a male or a woman, because if you're a woman, you don't need like a PSA test either. So um, basically what is, uh, it, it doesn't have a few things that are designed on public marketplace plans. So the public marketplace they are mandated to have things like maternity coverage, things like psych coverage, um, like mental health, things like drug rehab, uh, those types of things. And uh, the private option does not actually has specific exclusions to those types of things. Um, because really the, uh, the way to get on these uh, plans for the private market is you know to be healthy and if you have you know not saying that people that have had history of drugs or whatever aren't necessarily healthy but uh they're a lot more strict when it comes to who they uh, accept onto the plans because that's how help, that helps keep their risk low and that's how they are able to provide their uh their clients you know all these upfront benefits without having to meet those deductibles because whenever you, it's just like in you know auto insurance or in um homeowners you know insurance property and casualty basically the um 
you know, it's all about risk. So if your risk pool is lower, which in if you ha if you only accept people, like healthy people onto your plan, your risk pool is lower. So uh, they're able to provide more benefits. Um, whereas in the marketplace, their risk is like enormous because they're letting people with all kinds of ailments on there, which is great. But uh, the people that, you know, don't necessarily benefit from that are the ones that, you know, are the healthy ones, basically. I gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, I remember before the ACA came out back in, it was a ways back there, wasn't it? I think it was like 2014, maybe, or 15. I'm yeah. not sure. Maybe I had even 12. Yeah, it was back there a little ways. I had a catastrophic plan, so I was high deductible mm -hmm. and was perfectly happy with it. I mean, as an active person, especially as a field adjuster, my biggest problems or biggest things were going to be, you know, like car accidents or mm -hmm. getting injured somehow. It wasn't that I was going to get sick or, I mean, could, but. Sure. Um, so I really like that. Plan. You never know with COVID and everything. You never know if you're going to get sick these right. days, right? Yeah, totally. So, you know, I. It was when that became my plan became illegal. They sent me a letter and they said, You're you can't have that plan anymore. Here, your new plan mm -hmm. is five times as much. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, I can't, I just can't do that. So, um, I'm really and they even have that people that are grand sorry to interrupt. They even have people that are grandfathered into those types of plans. And, um, I have clients that have been grandfathered into, you know, a, one of those catastrophic plans or one of those like Cadillac plans. But the problem now is, yeah, you can keep your coverage, but can you afford your coverage? Cause now it's $2,500 right. just for you a month. Exactly. And so who's going to be able to afford that with a, yeah, you get your two thousand dollar deductible, but you're paying over two thousand dollars a month for the coverage. Um, anything else that you want to add um, that you can think of that you want to? I think the there? biggest thing is it's not uh, you know what I want to kind of the message that I want to get out there is you know it's not necessarily only being healthy. You know I will help. I want to help everyone. It's you know I will look at what your options are based in your zip code and. Whichever way it is, whether it's on the marketplace or whether it's on a private carrier or whether it's the group coverage that, you know, your husband has access to or your wife has access to, it doesn't matter what the situation, you know, I just want to help everyone. And um, even if it's not necessarily that you are going to go with a private option, it's really not about that. It's really just about helping people. And so, uh, you know, I don't... I've, ever want to get the message out there that, you know, only contact me if you're healthy, obviously, because, you know, what's, I mean, even if, for example, uh, you know, you might have someone in your family that does have something that wouldn't qualify for a private plan, you know, that sometimes it's more cost effective for that person to go on the marketplace, have the marketplace benefits, and the rest of the family go onto the private option because, there's not a deductible that they're going to have to meet. So every situation and every family situation and every individual situation is different. And it's also different for small businesses. If you're a small business owner that has less than 50 employees, there's a lot of opportunity that you have uh, to that you don't have to get like a group coverage plan because with group coverage comes a lot of um, regulation. Like you have to have, uh, there's a lot of different things that with typical group coverage you have to have. And with private options, you know, you don't have to have all those rules that like typical group coverage has. So I would say that if you had a small business with less than 50 employees, you know, it's definitely a good opportunity uh, to check out what your options are. Everybody wants to know, you know, how do I get health insurance? You know, a yeah. lot of people do have spouses that they're on their group plan and mm -hmm. they're adjuster and they work in the field and stuff, but but a lot of people And yeah, and that's like the best, you know, that could be like the best of both worlds, right? Because honestly, group coverage for the most part is going to be the best. But if that's not an option for you, I mean, I would never pull someone off of a group plan unless they their employer, for example, didn't cover them and they and their group coverage is ridiculously expensive because like the employer p pays for the employee but it doesn't pay for the spouse or the kids so in that case you know you could leave the employee with the group plan and the kids could go to a different option but you know every situation is different so even if you have a access to a group coverage that's not always the most 
cost effective thing for you and your family to do that gives you the best benefits and, and you have to weigh what's the best for me and my situation is it and like what am i using the coverage for depending on depending on what you use the coverage for is really going to answer a lot of the questions is what really going to answer a lot of the uh you know questions that all have uh for you and which way you should go so speaking of which, like, so, so what is, how does, what does the process look like if somebody uh, is interested in connecting with you um, to learn what their options are? Sure. Basically, there is the landing page and a little short survey. Basically, it's your zip code. Uh, do you have any pre-existing conditions? Who's your current insurer through? You can even tell me, you know, the, the price. Some people don't want to it is, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, it can be helpful to obviously for me to know so I can determine, you know, what your budget is for healthcare. Um, and then like if you have daily prescriptions, if you have any pre-existing conditions and, you know, basically the age and who is needing the coverage. Those are basically, there's a little survey um, that's on the landing page. And those are basically the questions that are asked. Based on that, I'll contact you and, you know, we can set up a time to chat either via text or voice or Zoom or whatever you guys want. And then, um, you know, we'll just go from there. It's a really quick process. You know, basically it's, you know, I would say 10 minutes, a 10 minute phone call. And then if you do want to search, you know, in detail and go through each policy, I mean, that would take a little bit longer, but I just want you to, you know, know the basics and know what your options are. So the steps are, um, go to the, the webpage, which we'll put on the screen. And then mm -hmm. there's a short, short form that goes straight to you. It doesn't go to a yeah. hundred thousand telemarketers exactly. all, going to call you, you know, every minute of every day for the next three months. Exactly. Uh, you'll take that, you'll, you'll take that information. It's confidential, right? Um, yes. And then you will get back with the person, set up a time uh, to have a call, Zoom call, text call, telephone call, and kind of discuss what the options are. It takes just a few minutes. Exactly. And then you'll, once you kind of, you know, say yes or no, or, you know, we're going to go this way or this way, mm -hmm. then you, then you'll, uh, uh, You'll go, you go into more detail. Kind of, yeah, you'll go into more detail. You'll you'll go back to your your underwriters, I guess, and then they'll kind of take it from there, right? So that's the whole process. Probably might take what, like twenty four hours, like a whole day, from you sending know, that first every, email to like you know getting a final. I mean, it really just depends on the situation. If if there is a question about your medical history or something, then it might go. They might have to order records. They might have to do a blood test. But that is just so I wouldn't even worry about, you know, any of that. Basically, you know, it's really the front end of it is the part that's the most time consuming. Once it's actually let's go ahead and do the application. Let's submit it. You're not doing anything after that. You're just waiting. You're just waiting to hear what if you're going to get insurance or not. So it's really just deciding whether it's really just contacting me letting me go to work for you and figure out what your options are. Let's review your options. And then if you go the private route, then I'll review the policy with you and your spouse or whoever. And then if you want to apply, we'll go to that application process and then we'll submit it. And then it's out of our hands. We're just waiting for a response. And then typically it's, you know, within the like 24 hours, but you know, on some rare occasions, it can be longer depending on if the underwriters feel like they need additional information from your uh, medical providers. But that's uh, typically that's not um, common. I don't know if anyone in the audience has uh, ever put your phone number in on a uh, get a quick quote you know, for, on a website. But basically what happens when you do that is, what happens when you put your phone number in is you, it gets sold to 5 billion different agents and then they cold call you and you just get text and phone call and text and phone call over and over and over and over and over again until who knows how long. And then, I mean, so your information is just always gonna be out there. So I would say if you, you know, if you don't want to get unsolicited phone calls and you do want to know your options, then, you know, 
I won't, I'm not, you know, in the business of, you know, selling any of your information or any of that. So I will, you know, just shred your information and it, it'll be protected. Um, another thing I will say is that um, this, uh, I only am licensed in so many states. And so I will provide a link or a map to you to show you which states I'm licensed in. The United Healthcare uh, or the Freedom Life is who the company that I'm contracted with. They are only in, I believe, 32 states. So it's majority nationwide, but um, it's not in every single state. So I can point you in the right direction, though. I can get you connected with someone in that state, though. Cool. So you are licensed in Montana, then? Yes. Okay. Well, obviously. <laughs> yes. I am licensed in Montana. <laughs> um, okay. Pretty much, you know, it's kind of like being a IA because, I mean, I started whenever I, I started out licensed in Texas and Oklahoma, obviously, and then I had all my licenses over the coast. Uh, kind of like I did with my adjuster's license. Um, and so I, I kind of just picked up agent license, producer licenses in all the states that I had my adjuster's license in because it was an easy, I guess, if you want to switch to being an agent and they already have, you're already uh, registered as an adjuster, you know, they already have the majority of your information and you've already passed right. the uh, the test. And so that's pretty much all I did was all the states that I had. And so if you're in a state where I don't currently have a license, then typically what I'll do is I'll pick up that state. And um, and that's when I'll go, and it takes like 24 hours to pick up a state. You guys know that because, you know, if you get deployed, if, you know, if there's a storm that's gonna hit a state you're not licensed in, that's when you go pick up that state. So it's the same concept. <laughs> I think, I think no matter what, it is a good opportunity to see what your options actually are so you're making the best financial decision for you and for your family and for your business. To get the process started with Allison, go to adjustertv.com slash help and fill out the very short, very simple form. That's going to go straight to Allison's email and your information will be completely confidential. After she assesses your responses, she will contact you to discuss what your options for health insurance may be. Again, she's the only person who's going to see your personal confidential information and your info will never be sold or shared with anybody else. AdjusterTV.com slash help. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.